My kids don't want to spend time with my ex. What should I do? Hi, I'm Bill Farias, founder of Farias Family Law. And we had a consult with a client a couple of weeks ago who asked this question. And her dilemma was that her children just do not want to go to the father's home. They cry when they go, they're upset, they come back upset. And so she's wondering how she can handle this situation. First of all, if there is an emergency, then you should consult with an attorney as soon as possible to determine a course of action and mainly determine whether you should file an emergency motion. So what constitutes an emergency? Well, it's mainly a threat to the safety and well-being of the children. And so you sometimes see this with uh, mental health issues, substance abuse from the other parent, uh, or any behaviors that are concerning, um, the children being around other individuals who might be dangerous. Those are just few, a few examples, but if it's in a gray area and you're not sure, talk to an attorney about whether it constitutes an emergency because this is sort of a separate category of cases. If it's an emergency, then you should be talking to an attorney to an attorney about getting this filed, getting it into the court system and getting it in front of a judge as soon as possible. Now, the other category is just generally when children are not comfortable going with the other parent, but there isn't a real safety issue and there isn't a risk. So what you need to think about under these circumstances is, first of all, it's important to ask yourself, have I played a role in this? And I know that some of you might be thinking, well, um, yes, I have made comments to the children because I'm concerned for their safety and I'm doing my best to manage this issue. And I can't imagine how difficult it is when you have someone who's on, on the other side who's very difficult to deal with and you just want to do what's right for the children and you're doing what you think is best. But it's important to ask yourself, whether you are actively supporting the relationship between the children and the other parent. Because if the answer to that is no, then that's a deeper issue that you should dig into. So first of all, to determine whether these feelings come from a genuine concern for the children, or if there's something that happened between you and the other party that's getting in the middle of the relationship between that person and the children. And this is a very complex issue because in a lot of these cases, there is a history of trauma, there is um, a history of breached trust, and so a lot of these issues run very deep. The point of all of this is it's very important to get to the root of why the children are not wanting to go with the other parent. So if it's a situation where the children uh, should be going with the other parent and it's in their best interest to spend time with the other parent and you are the one sending signals to, this children, uh, to the children that that's not a good thing to do or putting down the other parent, then that's something that you should talk to a therapist about um, and work out so that you can get that right and do what's best for the children. If it's a situation where you are fostering the relationship with the other parent and the children have an issue with that parent, then that's something that also might need to be addressed, perhaps in a clinical setting. In some cases, what people do is set up some family therapy so that the children, the other parent, and a therapist meet and work out the issues. Sometimes that also involves, in many cases, it involves individual counseling, either for the other party, um, sometimes for yourself, sometimes for the children. So exactly what kind of clinical intervention is necessary depends on your specific circumstances, but it's really important to dig 
down to get to the root of why these kids are not going. Again, I would always ask, am I playing a role in this? And if so, what role? And maybe it is that you're just doing the right thing and protecting the children. And if so, then action needs to be taken to get the right parenting plan in place. However, if you are subconsciously sabotaging the relationship between the children and the other parent, and there's no good reason for it, then that's something you should work out and dig deep into to make sure that you fix it. If you are protecting the children and there is an issue between the other parent and the children that needs to be worked out, then that's also something that you need to get to the root of and actually put in action a plan to address those issues. So the worst thing to do is bury your head in the sand and not do anything about it because a lot of these situations just get worse and you end up with a, a really sad dynamic where some of these children just lose connection with the other parent and right as long as the other parent is stable and it's in the best interest of the children to see that other parent, you have to make an effort to foster that relationship. Again, if that's not the case and there are reasons that the parenting time should be restricted or eliminated, then you absolutely should consider that and address it. So what to do if your children are not wanting to see the other parent really depends on the specific circumstances but step number one is figuring out what's going on and engaging help to figure out what's going on when you can't figure it out yourself and or you need help to address it this is super important it, it, you're at a crossroads here if you're dealing with this issue right and you have to make the right decision because the children's well-being depends on it. If you have any questions about this, you can call us 508-675-0464. You can email us at info at farriersfamilylaw.com. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to our channel, um, like it, share it with anyone you think might benefit from it. And you can also find us on social at Farrius Family Law. Thank you. Have a good day.